Yeah, baby. Yeah. The Mac is back. Back with another video. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Yunikala, and today we're having a look at Secunda by Wavelet Audio. Now, I was familiar with Wavelet Audio to begin with because they have this uh, library called Groth, which they call, uh, let me open up this page, Modern Cinematic Instruments Inspired by the Dark Ages and Mythology. So I don't own that library. I came really close to buying it, but as you know, I'm broke as fuck. And secondarily, um, I try not to buy anything that I'm not using right now. So if there isn't a project where I can leverage stuff, I really try not to buy stuff unless it's, even if it's super appealing, which uh, that one was, I came really close there. So I didn't, uh, I did not buy it because I did not not buy it. I think that's right. Uh, because of anything due to the library, but just, you know, trying to be smart and save money. So Groth I was familiar with and Wavelet, Wavelet Audio actually reached out to me to check out uh, Secunda. So again, might as well touch on the transparency at this point. Yes, they did send me this copy. Uh, I'm not being paid to make this video or edit it. They just sent it over. Well, actually, they asked me if I wanted to check it out. And I said yes, because Groth looked uh, super promising back when I uh, had a look at it. Um, and this seemed super, super cool as well. So um, all that being said, all opinions are my own, both in good and bad. I haven't been asked to say anything one way or the other, nor would I ever do that. Um, I do want to touch on their sales because they have a sale going on. No, sorry, not a sale, but intro pricing for Secunda. Uh, and I, I wasn't asked to mention the sale, but I knew it was going and it's only going for three more days. So I'm filming this on the 4th of March and the intro sale is until March 7th. So if you're watching this and it seems good, then you can save looks like $40 doing that, which seems like a, you know, pretty reasonable discount. So full price, $199 um, and intro price $159. Uh, price wise, again, it's not free, <laughs> uh, not expensive, not ex exactly, you know, cheap either. So somewhere in the middle, uh, in terms of the value, we can all only, you know, decide that at the end of this video. Um, but let's have a look at how they describe this. So first of all, secunda, my understanding is Latin and means second. It's also a name uh, for a girl. Um, not sure how that reflects uh, on the content of this, but maybe it's like uh, maybe growth was the first thing and this is the second. I don't know. Um, but they call this. So first of all, let me let me uh, go back to the um, main page. So this kind of has apparently two subtitles. So they call this power of human voice and also emperor's toolkit. So quite a few subtitles. And then this is described as throat singing and cinematic instruments based on power of the human voice. Cool. So the throat singing stuff, um, super excited to check that out. I love that kind of stuff and pretty much everything I've checked out on that front has been impressive. Um, but this seems like this covers a lot more than that. So they do call it a tool kit. Uh, they call it a massive tool kit for contact player based on the mysticism of throat singing that dives into the foggy veil of distant realms graced by the presence of the Emperor's army. 
Secunda is saturated with the raw, pure power of the human voice. It adds spice to the sound. I don't know why I had to make it weird like that, but um, and invites to dive into a vast palette of throat singing, rich in organic textures, ancient vocal harmonies, and massive sonic storytelling instruments. Okay, so yeah, if it is like a big, big library in that way, then, you know, 200 bucks isn't, uh, in my estimation, much at all for like a big, big library like that. So they call it perfect for adding depth, depth, crunch, and haunting resonance to any type of sound project, soundtrack, film scores, trailer music, folk music, electronic music, and more. Uh, cool. So it seems like the throat singing is at the center of it. Uh, and then also offers a huge amount of organic modern sound design based directly on the sound of throat singing. Okay. Multiple round robins, velocity layers, and real legatos. Mm, that's that's good. Is usually wouldn't necessarily expect real legatos on it unless it was really put to the front. But you know, times are changing. Uh, they got some. They got a walkthrough video, a playthrough video, st uh, stem playthrough, and just a walkthrough. This is a blind demo as. Not as always, but I try and do blind ones as often as possible. So you get my authentic uh, reaction to this. Uh, and also, you know, first impressions. Um, seems like this, uh, the instruments themselves divide into four categories. So you, so you have main, then you have phrases, then you have one shots, and then you have stems. In main, what we have opened up here, you've got um, they seem like different palettes of sounds in phrases, obviously different phrase types. Uh, one shots includes hits and impacts, atmospheres, horns, calls, brahms, transitions, that kind of stuff, growls, breaths. And in stems, don't know what those are. They have artsy names like augury, Blade Dancer desert, Desserts. <laughs> the Awakening of Desserts. No, Deserts, Awakening, etc. So they could be like, um, again, like different palettes of these different things put into one. I don't know, but we'll see. Cool. So most of this seems like they, need, they got some uh, more colorful description of what it is. Made for contact player. Uh, requirements. Uh, yeah, contact player. 7.5.0 or up. 6.2 gigs of hard drive space. 9.4. Uh, that's probably like uncompressed. Uh, compatible with hardware by native instruments. Uh, and the features summarized true legato, multiple round robins, multiple dynamic layers, bonus stems, uh, 24 bit, 28 kilohertz, lossless, makes sense, and snapshots. Cool. Um, then I have some stuff behind the artists. I'm not going to go into those, but that's cool that they include that. Uh, in terms of Wavelet audio, um, they are from Kazakhstan, I believe. Let me have a look have a double look at that. So to my understanding, they make custom stuff. If you have a custom sample library that you want to do, and then they do these sort of, you know, open to the public, but, um, you know, buyable, bodable, buyable libraries that uh, peasants can, like us can, can buy. And, um, yeah, cool. But they seem, uh, super, uh, passionate about it. Uh, I don't know where I pulled the Kazakhstan out. Maybe it's from the contact page. Um, I want to. I want to double check that so I don't. I don't balls it up. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to find. Maybe I have. Maybe I had a dream. I think they are. I I pulled that probably out of my ass. Or it's written in here. Let's have a better look. Yeah. But it seems like they do stuff with care and love. 
and that's cool always amazing in my book let's put this this book away I don't know much more about them but they seem passionate they're probably in Kazakhstan and um, <laughs> that's cool uh, in terms of what you'll be hearing today it's only second secunda 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 in uh, action no added effects no reverb nothing everything you hear is coming from uh, just the instrument itself I only have a limiter on the master bus to make the level consistent for this video but it's made to be as transparent as possible uh, if you hear any clipping uh, it's probably the limiter I'll probably let you know if it is the limiter and if it's not I'll certainly let you know if the instrument itself is doing it um, but yeah the plan for this video go in blind uh, play as much of this as we possibly can I you know I can't look at everything because that takes two weeks but uh, uh, try and cover as much as possible first of all I love the look of their libraries very stylistic they look fantastic art is amazing and on this screen I don't actually know I'm guessing does it does it come through here Mail. let me let me Mail. so we're getting a bit of a, uh, a <laughs> taste there um, yeah because my screen capturing software is a bit uh, is a bit iffy uh, I don't know whether you can see let me uh, let me double check here uh, okay it unfortunately I don't know if the graphics are updating for you let me double check okay I just have to believe that the software is working as usual because when I'm in the software the, the video capture it doesn't update the contact view which sucks balls but it is what it is but anyway there's a beautiful animation here uh, rain falling on this army I, I suppose in this beautiful landscape but yeah beautiful art uh, interface looks uh you know clean uh modern so yeah looks great i know doesn't affect the sound at all but these things are super important for the likes of myself so i really appreciate the effort going into that makes makes it a lot, lot nicer to actually work um with these tools and that can be super inspiring so i'm just going to open the side panel here for you so we're in the main folder here and it opens up three different main instruments I guess uh, you have Emperor Chant then you have Karg Kargira Kar Kargura Kar in America it would be Kargira uh, Kargura I, that's what I'm gonna say low and high and then you have drone atmosphere so uh, those seem to be the the ones in this folder um, okay well I guess it, there's not much more to it than just start playing in the settings we have transition type velocity and time okay that's interesting sculpt you have tone balance oh sorry balance one low balance two okay so that's kind of like a preset color type you got LFO in the left bottom corner reverb on the right and then you got long transition offset okay short transition offset so cool that you can jump in here and tweak this stuff I don't know how intuitive that is going to be you would have to just play with it for longer but I'm sure that that is going to be super useful at some point uh, we got these two okay two red triggers here in the bottom okay so this is interesting i've never seen a system behave like this in contact so these are some kind of step triggers 
For. Of. For sure. But in terms of what is happening here on the uh, keyboard view, you can see these orange notes here in the bottom. Go. They change as I'm pressing keys. In terms of what they map here, because we can play this blue zone and it's going to play a different uh, syllable. <laughs> First of all, the transitions are smooth, like I can play at my own speed and I'm not hearing... It, it, it's, it's adapting well to the speed that I want to work with. And obviously here you can uh, adjust those transitions, but right out of the gate this seems to operate really nicely. Maybe some tweak, like every part, every song is different, so you might have to jump in there to tweak uh, if and when you want to make it perfect, but it it's doing a really nice job right out of the box uh, figuring that out. <laughs> Obviously, you go, if you go super fast, you don't give it a chance to actually get some of the syllable out. So that's very understandable. So you have to be mindful of which ones you combine. But if you have a certain tempo you're working with, you obviously want to find a syllable that kind of, if it's a fast note, you want something that comes out fast so you can transition into the longer syllables. Oh shit, we were muted. First of all, huge selection of syllables here. Um, I think one, two, three, four, five if I'm not miscalculating, octaves of different syllables, and they seem to be different. So that's a huge, vast <laughs> um, a library of those at, at your disposal. So I'm pretty sure you won't um, struggle to, to find the right syllables to chain in a way that works for your song. That's a massive amount of stuff. Uh, I, I don't know what these orange ones are mapping. So if I kind of try and follow some kind of a basic logic, if I'm I, I'm guessing the orange ones would show me which uh, which vowels it kind of transitions into potentially. <laughs> Maybe? Because if I press here... Yeah, so if I press this C here, it seems to only light up one uh, note. So there, if I did a faster passi passage... Yeah. Okay, so if I did fast, it kind of painted the steps that it took. Okay, that's so that makes sense. That's actually also useful even from the point of view if you want to kind of stitch things together and you're playing around with this, you can see what transitions it's doing. So you can either do that or not do that. But um, I'm sure there's a better, like a <laughs> like a better uh, explanation or reason why 
why it works this way. But that's that's very interesting. I've never seen that before. So it seems like it's working in at least two different um, ways, like in shorts and and longs. So we do have this box here, which has which says short phrase and length, uh, which seems to be oh okay. So it's changing from two to three. Oh, I get it. Short, f <laughs> short phrase length. I thought that was like a mode selection, but it's actually a sentence. Um, okay. So you can control the length of the short phrase. Makes sense. And then it doesn't seem like you have the same for the transition here, but yeah, I'm sure as you understand this, I mean, I'm sure many of you pick this up faster than I do, but uh, I'm sure this will be useful once you <laughs> dig further into it. But I mean, again, importantly, I don't feel like I'm left wanting more in terms of getting uh, getting excellent results just by using what's here. <laughs> So, if you hold the key, it loops. Uh, loop is sounds pretty good to me. Go. Can definitely hear that it is a loop, but it's done. You know, especially with this one, there was one syllable where it where it has to kind of re-trigger. Uh, it sounds. Um, more like the vocalist could is actually doing it like it's actually uh doable i don't know if musically i'd want to even have very long uh throat <laughs> singing like that so it's kind of not even an issue from that perspective at least for me but you know you can hear that it's looping but it's also sounds realistic enough and also sounds uh with certain syllables synthetic enough because that could also be something that you're going for but yeah oh that's really cool yeah so i can easily build stuff with this what do you do obviously notice is that we don't have any pitch control and that's because I'm guessing you can't really pitch sing with throat singing all that much. Uh, I guess you could do a bit, but probably not much. Um, so, but obviously that being said, because you might find that for your track, it doesn't, because it does have a pitch. Um, it doesn't quite align there. You can obviously uh, tune it with contact itself. <laughs> It's actually really, really fucking cool. Uh, you can obviously begin to hear the synthetic qualities in that, but again, that could be something you want to go for. Uh, it sounds <laughs> really, really, really cool. Um, but yeah, maybe the minus two is kind of staying in the organic realm and then beyond that uh, gets a bit altered. You could still pass that with somebody with an extremely deep voice. That sounds really, really badass. I don't know what it is. I think with Contact uh, 7, uh, the tuning has been vastly improved. Uh, I don't know if it's only like placebo, but I've noticed that a few times now. So I think it is a lot smoother. Smoother. Um, let me see if they're... Oh, okay. So they do have built-in tuning. Okay, well, this solves it or makes it a lot better. Uh, so yeah, it does have a few, a few different tunings. We got D-sharp, 
we got E, we got F, we got F sharp, G, and anything that those don't cover, again, go with the contact one. This is, yeah, super versatile. Let's uh, test a few of those. <laughs> Yeah, so that gives you kind of a brighter, uh, sharper tone on the G. But yeah, that gives you a lot of ground and then with a bit of contact tuning, you can pretty much hit this in any any key uh, that you want. Uh, chorus filter, all right. Let's uh, test a few of these tones. Ragor. Bit of limiter clipping there, so I'm gonna pull that back. It definitely sounds a bit raw. Again, not a criticism, but just a different style. Yeah, definitely more low and focused, kind of tucked in the top brightness tapered off. And we have low. Yeah, the low one just rolls uh, the top off even more. These can be really, really uh, good. Just inch you closer to a better mixing position, just right out of the gate. So this is really useful. Go so good, Balance 2 sounds kind of like there is something in the middle that is a bit more open, a bit lighter. Maybe there's some kind of a cut there or something. Um, Ren. That sounds really kind of round and tight in a nice way. I actually really like that. Yeah, it sounds a bit more polished, I'd say. Nice mix of things, very present. We still get that low end. So this might be my my favorite tone. Um, transition type, time. Let's see how that works. Again, there we could hear the the loop, and it sounds. Again, it's kind of an interesting mix. It definitely could be passable as just like an organic sustained note. Obviously, a singer wouldn't exactly create that kind of loopy timing, I guess. But that creates a really interesting sound, like um, like a synthetic meeting this really raw organic. Uh, quality. Not exactly sure how the transition type here works. It says one second. Yeah, there's definitely, I'm, I'm not understanding the transition here. Okay, so apparently based on the velocity beyond if i go beyond 100 it goes for a short transition and underneath that goes for a long one okay i get that and then okay time wise uh long transition it's for a second short transition is i can't wrap my head around that but <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, show, it tells you where my IQ is. Um, cool. Well, I mean, this seems fantastic at the end of the day, despite the stuff that I didn't understand. Uh, very simple, intuitive, clear, pleasant to work with. Sounds fantastic. I actually really like these tone controls. guess you could 
call them mix balances um very useful uh and also i don't hear i don't hear any of them being over or underdone they're just like different mix snapshots if you will so i actually find this really useful because a lot of the time with libraries they are sort of over blown too much compression too, too much reverb too much eq you know scooping or too much this or that so they're nicely tastefully done uh can inch you closer to that that uh mixed phase all right well i'm sure i i missed a bunch of stuff here and didn't do it justice from that perspective but we're going to move on and we're going to move to kargura Korjaira, low and high so we got a bit of a different thing going on here clearly you got low which is colored in this orange red which is probably yep the red zone here now let's uh boost our gain a bit on the limiter then we have the high vowel which is here in the yellow zone this is really cool stuff and i would guess okay so depending on the key that i press so every key is a vowel okay and what does the blue do okay so that's pitched uh stuff sounds like the first blue on the left is let me actually check my video capturing software okay cool seems like we're good um seems like that's the low vowel but this is some kind of a legato i don't know if this is the legato that they talk about i would guess so it's pretty good let me play a bit more So the range is, for understandable reasons, I haven't done any throat singing myself, barring like a like a hack version of that, <laughs> maybe after a few whiskeys or something like that. But um, yeah, you can't really have a lot of range. So this, mm, you know, is obviously limited, but that's kind of down to the instrument. Um, that being said, obviously, if you're writing for the style, you can really write in only in certain ways. Uh, so that kind of, that's a non-issue in my books. Uh, and also if they went further than that, it would probably sound not like a throat singer. Um, but um, that's a cool addition. Harmonizing with that, pretty tough with the ranges. But again, I haven't written a lot of stuff for this instrument so uh can't really speak for that too much in terms of this low yellow zone so i guess this is controlling the vowel for the higher legato let's test that theory uh, yeah. Seems like it stands. All right, okay, cool. So the blue zone also controls the pitch for the low vowels. So, okay. Oh, I see, because okay, this is probably not the legato. That's, if this is not the legato, that's, that's still, you know, pretty impressive for a legato-ish sound but yeah okay so it controls pitch for the vowel that is active currently so makes sense 
That's very cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that. I actually like this kind of um, clean, simple, easy to wrap your head around despite my troubles with this. Um, but yeah, okay, that, so that controls the vowel. Hmm. I wonder if this is like, if you're using this end and the one here. That could still be the legato system. I, I guess we'll see we come to that and this changes the vowel also for the low one but also this changes the blue changes the pitch for the red zone here let's boost the gain here a bit because it, it 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 is quite a bit quieter than the previous one that's really cool i really love the the textures here they are raw rich but still sounds you know ready to go this isn't like just straight out of the you know the studio uh polished but they they do keep it they do keep it um raw and textural i love this is a really good balance of doing stuff because i can still take this and mix it in different directions or i can just you know go with this <laughs> straight out of the out of the box i want to touch on the art again on this instrument because again we have this rain falling here i've never seen actually animations like this uh in contact so that's cool again a lot of people might say well that's unnecessary but i love this kind of stuff makes it a pleasure to work with it can inspire you give you the right mood but again we see this army here and the pillar where presumably secunda is standing um uh, secunda i think is the right i don't even i have no idea what the right one is so i don't know what i'm saying uh cool this is very nice. Another kind of a configuration. Uh, I might... Mm, do I like this more? Gives the, the pitch control. Obviously makes it a more... more controllable. For instances where you actually want to... or need to control the pitch there. Then we have the drone atmospheres up next. Uh, I tend to love this kind of stuff, so really interested in seeing how this pans out. Let's just uh, start playing and then get our bearings through that. Okay, that is the limiter crapping the fuck out, so <laughs> let's get a level going first.
I gotta, I gotta do it. Gotta do the walk away. That is uh, super impressive. I mean, as a, uh, as uh, a few of you might know, uh, I've said it many times, but I'm a huge Vardruna fan, or Vardruna. Um, and obviously this has a ton of overlap with that kind of stuff. They obviously use throw singing, but even a lot of the atmospheres here, the percussion, it's like having my own personal Vardruna here with me in the studio. Uh, super impressive. That's, <laughs> that's it. Uh, very, very, very good. Touching on the interface here. At first, I was like, Ooh, the, the the visuals somehow seem a bit mushy to me because of the waveforms, but this is actually super brilliant. Um, really, really good layout here. So I'm presuming, yes, if I'm muting these different ones, it only leaves me the waveform that is active. So this one would be the tonal. Again, uh, and I love that I can see the waveform here in high resolution because this helps me a lot uh, in, in 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 locating uh, the right parts and seeing what's happening, and especially with the percussion here, which is the yellowish here, uh, you can see when the you know when the drums or the low booms are coming in, so you can adjust to that or see if you you know don't want to make the loop continue there um that's fantastic and then effects so that's more like a cinematic hybrid modern type of a layer uh yeah fantastic fantastic layout really 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 good and everything here is creatively super on point in terms of the production here super on point very polished art artistically and engineering wise super mature uh super vibey and, and most importantly inspiring um because that's that's what we're looking to do we're looking to write music and i want to get inspired by these sounds and then build worlds with that uh i would need to play with this more to get an idea of the how pitchy um, it, and what I mean by pitchy is not out of tune but how much movement of melody and harmony is going on here so I'm guessing this would be like a mix of different components in the library the percussion the phrases uh, the the impacts etc so this kind of pulls those together that's a guess that's not a statement um, so you can probably jump in there individually and control these things really interested to see how the interface is done with those but yeah i mean i'm thinking about the pitch uh, because oftentimes with these if they're done in a certain way that's sort of minimal enough then you can build your own harmony and you can actually move in in you know actually make chords and actually move har harmony with these and I really like that way because that that way I can build my own harmony uh, obviously sometimes phrases can be perfect for a section and then you know there's no better more realistic way of doing it um, but hard to say but but that being said what I'm hearing here in terms of the musicality the creativity is is really stunning so down here in the red zone we got something that's called pitch key switches. So this kind of hints to the fact that I can, at least with the right uh, sample, with the right phrase, with the right atmosphere, or whatever you would call that, I could b build movement of harmony. But that depends on the the phrase or the you know the actual sample itself, whether it has. Uh, melody or harmony content there itself but let me um let us test the pitch so we have a lot of range here it's uh 
basically that's uh, an octave of stuff and I'm guessing here it shows when I press a different blue key which triggers a different selection of samples the yellow key switch changes which shows me in what pitch it's in which is interesting uh, super useful okay so I think it shows me yes the original pitch that it's recorded in but it doesn't it doesn't reset if I play a different key so it doesn't automatically reset to the original recorded pitch it just it just shows it shows it yes which is good that's good So one is the chest, uh, chest. <laughs> that's a Freudian <laughs> slip if I've ever heard one. Wanted to test if the pitch changes in the middle. I see that doesn't sound all that great. I just wanted to test the technicality of it, but. Um, so obviously I would time that better in the DAW this key switch configuration is so low that I can't actually I can only play the two keys here uh, I'm sure there's a way to move that around I'm not so contact savvy to know that for sure but uh cool so I mean this is super super cool I'm wondering how much in my workflow and the way I write music would I need to you know tinker with this and would this be um better flowing as a workflow thing versus using these each of these individually i tend to be a pretty kind of individual approach type of a writer usually but we'll see we'll probably come to those components uh soon enough so i want to see what these little boxes here do okay so seems like these are options of how to see them yeah and, and and again the level fluctuates so much here that if you hear any uh, artifacts or distortion it is the limiter because i i have to level write it constantly because all of these uh you know have quieter uh sample collections and some have louder but yeah this is a different way of visualizing them individually but simultaneously that's cool this is actually super well thought out just as a preference kind of a thing uh and here you can actually get rid of the colors this is this is the kind of stuff that m a lot of devs might never look at you know might seem super unnecessary um but it just shows the the detail they've gone into because this even doing this i'm sure takes work and time and that they put it in there is just as a preference thing if you just want to see the whole thing combined uh that's really cool um what does this do okay so this kind of zooms in only gives you the the waveform here and this one guess is kind of a sharper less smooth smooth sm smoothened out version of that 
for higher resolution. Yeah, I guess. Cool. All right. Um, obviously, a pretty vast selection of things here. These tonal things uh, speak to me a lot. So let's do another pass of those just to uh, check it out. Uh, let's uh, stay in, in that key, for example. Or let's actually go to uh, F sharp. Yeah, for example, in that one, we already have quite a bit of musical content happening. It's, it's not just static. There we have some pitch fluctuation as well. So we do have pitch drifting at the very least or some um, melody movement, stuff like that. With this style, it's very understandable. You would often use that and I'll probably use that in many places. Uh, in terms of if I want to do, uh, if I, if I want to have kind of those drones, but less of that pitch drifting or melody or something. Uh, that would be useful because then I could add in those as I desired. So, um, again, that's kind of like a, it's fantastic what's in here. But if I think about more utility and more diversity, that's what I would probably, uh, look for. Like a, a simpler, more static drone, beautiful, those beautiful sounds, but less of those, already made kind of compositional choices that would uh, uh, probably be what I was personally uh, looking for more but again we just scratched the surface I'm sure at least some of them provide more of a static uh, pitch cool I think we went through the uh, main folder now next up Let's open up phrases. So obviously, as with any library that has phrases, there's a tends to be a, a lot of them. So we can only pretty much scratch the surface here. But hopefully I can give you some kind of a um, half decent look at that. Obviously, we already heard a bunch of phrase stuff happening. Uh, but yeah, so okay, good. We have same kind of a waveform view here um one of the things that i'm thinking about is can i all right yes control yes okay so this is good this is what i was uh kind of looking for so you can choose which portions you actually play. So you can do a lot of cool looping stuff with this if you do whatever kind of music utilizes that. Oh, no, 
I love that kind of rhythmic stuff. It's it's so good in the right place. Um, let's go from here further down. It's like a nightclub hit. Just put a 808 on that and uh, off you go. Yeah, super creative. Um, again, shows like that breath, that uh, inhale through the nose used as a hi-hat. It's just like a lot of people wouldn't go for that. A lot of people are not going to take that and write music with it. Um, but some people are, uh, in including yours truly. And I love that kind of stuff. Just super, super creative, super fun. You could do bonkers things with that. Sorry about my poor timing here. It's uh does have a, a bit of a lag there, but that's just like uh, get used to the feel of it. And I'm not not exactly <laughs> didn't play exactly super focused. Uh, again, we got uh, our tune key switches down here. We got one over two octaves here. No, actually two octaves uh, of range, which seems like a lot. <laughs> that can do a lot of cool stuff like the pitchy stuff and again like they said you know for it's not just for cinematic stuff or folk or you know doing this kind of a in a traditional sense you can you know in electronic music i can see a lot of people using this uh yeah I really love those uh, those sounds. They tend to the pitching tends to be super interesting for the human voice in a very unique way for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, very cool. <laughs> bit overboard there at the end but yeah fantastic it's just the it sounds so good on on the vocals uh this goes super low i mean we're not even at the lowest end this is the lowest <laughs> Yeah, a lot of really interesting stuff happens when you pitch stuff, period. Especially for the voice, very powerful. And this is the high end. So it gets to that robotic uh, tone. And again, the yellow key shows you the original pitch. It's 
it sounded like um, they said "raka uh, tulee housuun," which <laughs> which means uh, snot gets into the trousers in Finnish. Um, didn't expect to ever say that sentence in my life, especially in this video, but uh, or in, in any video. But uh, there you go. Uh, fantastic stuff. Um, again, the pitch gives you that scope for the different genres and just the added flexibility. Tons of different uh, phrases here. Uh, again, big, clear waveform. Super useful. Again, you can paint the sections you want to use. Um, yeah, really, really well done. Then you also have a speed control, which is, again, further flexibility. What? What just happened? Anyway, really good stuff. Uh, but yeah, we best move on, otherwise we're gonna just spend the whole day here. Uh, so that was complex Kargura phrases. Kargura. Kargura. Um, let's not spend any more on Kargura because I don't know why I pronounce it like it's Swedish, but uh, I have no explanation for that. Uh, let's go into breath and because otherwise, you know, we get we got the general idea of the sound of that. Uh, let's do breath and whispers phrases. And that that will have to be it for this section. Uh, really love breaths and whispers. Really powerful way of bringing like a vocal percussive element to your pieces, so very much worth exploring. sounds like in my head uh, anyway yeah super cool uh, I love that they're clearly adventurous in terms of these phrases a lot of people are just gonna be like what the heck are you ever gonna use that for uh, and I would encourage you to try it out have some fun uh, I love that they're you know some of them are just like bonkers crazy and make some people super awkward but uh, yeah, I love that stuff. Um, really cool. Again, ton of uh, uh, tuning options here. A lot of scope. Uh, you can go for that organic sound or not. Um, yeah, I mean these seem fantastic. Uh, that's that's <laughs> that's about what I have to say about that. Let's go into the one shots. Um, cool. Let's do something from hits and impacts. And just play. We are clipping the limiter. Very crisp. These are really well 
recorded, mixed, produced. Yeah, very well produced. Really, really up there in terms of the the quality of that. What's special about these seem like they have this again that crispiness. And oftentimes crispiness can be too much too harsh, you know, too much brightness there. But these don't have that. Uh, in fact, they have a very nice balance of kind of the body and the crisp, why they actually feel extra crispy. So very well done on that front. And they also sound super modern. And that's I mean that in a high compliment fashion. They sound like they are of the time but not, you know, trying too hard or being sort of overhyped. Yeah, very, very solid stuff. Again, Red Zone gives you a bunch of tuning options. That's fantastic. Uh, again, super simple, simple interface. Very clean, clear, concise, good. Uh, happy to see a reverb control here because I tend to prefer to, in most cases, do that myself. Not because there's anything innately wrong with what has been done in the library, but just that added control in terms of balance because sometimes a, a reverb might be great for the sound, but it's not perfect for the context of the soundscape that I'm trying to build. Uh, so yeah, there's that. In terms of what I would be missing, uh, I mean, in terms of the effects they've used here, it's I ha didn't hear any super apparent like delay or something in there, which I would like to get rid of. Let's play a few more and then add to that statement. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of effects baked into the sample, so would I like to have control over the distortion? Sure, the reverb, etc. I mean, they have this added reverb here, but also there's baked in stuff in there. This is like, yes, in a perfect world, I would have control over all of those things, but you are you are getting their mixing sense, your, their productional sense, everything baked in there. And to achieve the quality that they go for, they bake them in the sounds. And to do that in contact, uh, probably they can't do it in the same quality and fidelity. So they have to make a call of, do we give the best possible effects uh, treatment that we can onto the audio waveform itself, or do we put that in contact in probably less great form and have people have control over that? Uh, and I would agree, I would choose this uh, approach over the other one, at least in terms of where we are not right now, in terms of, uh, uh, well, it's not really an, a con contact effect quality issue, but rather, I'm, let's put it this way. I'm happy that they did it this way. We have their sense of mixing and production in these samples. And, you know, they, and, and like I said, they're not overhyped to the de degree that I would say oh, I wish I could get rid of that distortion or that reverb. They're quite tastefully done and easy enough to, you know, put into your mix. Uh, so, yeah, but again, very, very solid here. Uh, let's move on to the signature atmospheres. Let's do number one. Really interested in hearing what these are like. So to me, these kind of sound like um, transitioning effect layers or 
uh, you know, maybe, you know, more tonal or atmospheric hits even. Uh, I was expecting here to hear like a, like a drone. Uh, yeah, like a more atmospheric drony uh, element. <laughs> Yeah, these definitely sound more like uh, effects, uh, you know, pitsy, pit, pitsy, pitchy <laughs> uh, stylistic effects. But again, they sound super solid. I was just, uh, based on the name, I was expecting like a drony atmosphere thing. Signature calls and horns. Again, very cool. Same productional quality, same good sense of, uh, you know, uh, art style, creative direction. These sound more like what I was expecting the atmospheres to be. So they're kind of like, yeah, atmospheric calls. I think that's a pretty decent term that they've used here. Um, all right, going into Brahms, let's see how much we can clip the limiter here. That being said, uh, these are have been so far all of these ones in this folder very well standardized to the level. I haven't I haven't had to ad adjust my limiter uh, after adjusting it to, for the for the first set of sounds. So really well uh, consistent on that front. <laughs> Very good. And again, you get one, two, three, over three octaves of these. Well, I mean, we don't have anything on the black keys, so yeah, less, <laughs> less than that. But a good selection. Again, sounds super crispy, big, polished. Uh, would I love that control over the reverb and the distortion? Yes, but I don't think I know many libraries at all that with this kind of a sampling approach do that. So. Uh, but that being said, I can see how I could fit these into pretty much any circumstance where I want to use these kind of sounds. Um, so not an issue in my eyes. Um, cool. Let's do transitions. Again, this is super consistent in terms of the quality. Um, and you get such a, like, basically all of these combine into a pool of transitions and hits. So you get pretty vast collection there. Then we have something called Stomp Designer. I was not expecting that. Uh, okay, this is interesting. No matter what key you play, it plays the same stomps, left and right foots. OK, 
Okay, cool. Not a ton of, um, like, uh, resolution there. But that, like, in terms of, like, velocity, there's none. Uh, but this can be, a, like, a really good added layer if you want to add. Because, uh, like, usually I wouldn't go for this kind of a as hyped sound for stomps. And, and again, that's not a criticism. That's just a preference. Uh, so I would I would bake this in with, like, more organic, maybe a bit more easygoing stomps. And use this to give it that kind of crispy and uh, crispy end. And then that that uh, that bottom. So it has a good selection of like a good combination of both both of those qualities. Uh, I wouldn't call this a designer exactly, but I understand maybe they didn't f <laughs> find a, another word for that. Growls and screams. Yeah. Ro. Soon. Ro. It sounds like they captured uh, a Finn, like a Finnish guy in the middle of a, a bar night. Night out after a couple of bottles of, uh, of um, something strong. And uh, <laughs> they got, got him to be a bit chatty and then recorded him. Run! Yeah. Especially that one. Very Finnish. Yeah. Soon. I'm sure there are many languages out there in which some of these are super insulting in the right combination, which is perfect. Uh, yeah, good. These are uh, sound to me a bit more sort of raw. Uh, raw er uh, and again that's not uh, an issue uh, it sound they sound very uh, pliable and like they will be responding to mixing very very easily so that in is actually much preferred in many cases than like a super actually yeah yeah much much preferred than like a more polished or over process or more processed sound which then you can't backtrack so actually I like that that call and these are breaths and whispers <sighs> this is the same guy but it's the next morning you know after the night out next morning he's gonna sound like this what the? What was that? <laughs> it says breaths and whispers. Tell me which one of those this is. It sounds like it's a. It's him on the toilet after the, the night out. Uh, yeah, we got to move on from that. I otherwise I'm just gonna play that for the rest of the day. <laughs> yes, I am five years old. Oh, cool. I mean, that's super funny. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that that. Uh, We've come to a close. So I'm just gonna open back up this thingy here. Um, cool. Yeah, let's, uh, let's summarize this. So, overall, uh, very impressed. Uh, sounds great. Uh, it is very centered on the throat singing, as they say. Uh, I was a bit sort of when they said it's a it's a massive library, and you know, with the I got this impression that there's going to be more stuff in there than there actually maybe 
was. Uh, obviously, your judgment of whether this is massive depends on your definition of what that means and also what you're expecting. For me, I just based on that, I expected like a lot more of the the drony atmospheric uh, stuff, uh, which we found in here in the drone atmosphere thingy, which I didn't. I, I don't think I I saw. Yeah, we didn't see access to those more than that. I did expect to see that, but um, but apparently that's that's it. But yeah, in terms of massive, I agree it's a massive selection of throat uh, singing stuff and the phrases. Uh, very comprehensive selection of sounds for those things. And then we did get this, uh, I, I need to look just to, just to be fair in my assessment and also actually reflect what's in there. Yeah, a, a ton of, like, it, it, it really covers a ton of ground in that growl singing aspect in every, every sense of the, <laughs> the, the word. Um, and then we did get, okay, we do get a ton of hits and impacts, tons of transitions. Um, and we have these Brahms growls and stuff like this. So, yeah, you do get a lot more than just the, and I don't say just in a, any, any sort of a belittling sense, but um, you get the, the vocal stuff very comprehensively. You get a very, very good selection of transitions and hits in a style that meshes with that, but also works really well for a lot of, I'd say mainly like hybrid kind of orchestral modern uh, stuff but by no means not limited to that, but definitely serving that as a main category. And then as an extension of that, you get uh, you get these uh, drones and the percussions from the drone atmosphere uh, main instrument. And that's pretty much how I would, yeah, that's how I would uh, define that. So when they said massive i expected the drone aspect and the percussive aspect to be just more expanded uh, and i would personally love to see that expanded because i loved what i was hearing the drones were super atmospheric very vibey like i said i wished for them to be a bit more modular so a bitch bit bitch, bitch <laughs> a bit less that was that's what i wanted to say okay um a bit less uh, pitch uh, stuff in there so I can add that in myself and then do a bit of maybe even harmony with some of the drones combine them uh, and again I love that that stuff is in there I just wanted to see more sort of modular stuff so I can write my own uh, melodies and, and movement of harmony etc uh, so yeah those are great but all across the board really well recorded mixed produced uh super stellar stuff all across the board very very uh mature and definitely definitely in the the top uh, uh definitely in the conversation of like the top quality mix and production uh stuff here it does stylistically have its own again like a darker modernly tinted sound uh but there are many things to move you shift uh, away from that if it doesn't quite serve you so again in this one we have the sculpting options with kind of different mixes essentially then some of the stuff had uh you know just like a raw sound so yeah super impressed and the playability of this again uh in these main instruments fantastic the playability all across the board really well interface fantastic they thought of so many things that are far beyond just the necessary like the visual visual um layers in the in the phrases and and the loops very easy to track things easy to follow easy to tweak it's all there so you know you know full score in that department uh 
as well and a pleasure to work with it there's no uh you know i don't struggle to find anything or tweak anything it's it's all in the in the right uh place and yeah the breadth of <laughs> the stuff you get the invo uh, in the vocal uh department in this uh throw singing style is extremely uh extremely comprehensive uh so yeah i think that pretty much covers covers it i don't want to ramble any longer to uh <laughs> to just repeat myself but yeah super cool stuff very impressed this makes me want to check out growth so i'll probably ask them if they want me to check it out i would love to since i was already very very uh interested in that uh what back when i saw it for the first time so interested in checking that out and also seeing how it you know compares to uh, uh seconda i don't know how to pronounce that still but um uh, interested to see the differences and maybe the, the progression um but yeah if you're looking for throat singing uh a throat singing library this has to be in the conversation for that um and on top of that you get uh fantastic transitions and hits and then you get super vibey and inspiring uh drones on top of that and like they are super super good that's that's my thing like i wish there was there was more of them they were that good that i wanted more <laughs> more drones more percussions and maybe in a more modular fashion so i can do more stuff with them but that's it that's it for this video uh thank you for listening thank you for watching i'll see you next time finished.